Hi guys, Rafael Marcolino here, and welcome to Drumo Sapiens every week with a new drum lesson for you. Today we're gonna talk about the 7 over 8 bar. It's a new odd time signature lesson. I already posted a lesson on the 5 over 4 bar, so if you didn't check that out, go search in my timeline or in my files for this lesson, for the 5 over 4 lesson, it's really cool. But today we're gonna talk about the 7 over 8, and I'm gonna show you two different strategies that I like to use to create more fluid and musical grooves in this odd time signature. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, to follow Drumo Sapiens on Instagram, to like our Facebook page, and if you want to receive every week a new drum lesson with a PDF file containing transcriptions of every exercise I show here, go to subscribe.drumosapiens.com and sign up to our mailing list. Now let's get started. Um, before showing you how to build up these grooves in 7 over 8, I'm gonna just do a quick explanation on what these numbers mean. So first I'm gonna use the 4 over 4 bar as an example for you to understand what those numbers really mean. The number on top shows how many beats we have inside this bar, and the number in the bottom shows in which subdivision we are gonna count those beats. So when we have a 4 over 4, it means that we have the equivalent of 4 quarter notes inside our measure. And when we have a 7 over 8, means that we have 7 eighth notes inside this measure. So instead of counting quarter notes, we have to count eighth notes to know exactly the size of this bar. So if we have a 4 over 4 bar and we are counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, using the same tempo, a 7 over 8 will sound. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. As eighth notes are half the duration of a quarter note. And to get started with a new odd time signature, I like to relate that to something that I'm really um, comfortable with, that I'm really familiar with. So the, the time signature that we are most familiar with is the 4 over 4. So I'm gonna start this lesson by playing a 4-4 four, four groove, a very simple groove, and we are gonna transform that 4-4 four, four groove into a 7-8 groove, and then we're gonna do some changes to this groove to make it more fluid and more musical. So our basic 4-4 four, four groove is gonna be 8th notes on the hi-hat, kick drum on the 1, snare on 2, kick drum on the 3 and the end of 3, and snare drum on 4. Check it out how that groove sounds, and then we're gonna transform it into a 7-8 groove. Okay, so now let's understand the difference between a 7 over 8 bar and a 4-4 four, four bar. On a 7-8 bar, we have 7-8 notes, as we saw before. On a 4-4 four, four bar, we have 8 eighth notes. So to transform this groove from a 4-4 four, four bar to a 7-8 bar, I'm gonna just erase the last eighth note of the groove, which is the end of 4. So now we're gonna have 7 beats of eighth notes playing exactly the same thing, but when we reach to the last note, that was beat 4 in our 4-4 four, four groove, which is the second backbeat, we're gonna go straight back to beat 1 with the kick drum again. So this is our first 7-8 groove. The first change we're gonna make from the 4-4 four, four groove to the 7-8 groove is just erasing this last 8th note of the groove. So check out how this first 7-8 example sounds. So this first example sounds a little bit raw, it, it, it doesn't sound really natural to me. Sounds like a 4-4 four, four groove that was cut to fit inside a 7-8 bar. But one very cool thing about uh, odd time signatures over 8 is that if you accent your 
hi-hat pattern or your ride pattern in every two notes starting on the the downbeats now because you have an odd number of eighth notes inside your bar that's gonna become a two bar pattern because we're gonna start accenting on the first note of the bar and then we're gonna accent every two eighth notes so we're gonna accent on the one on the three on the five and on the seven of the first bar when we get to the second bar we just accented the last note so the first note of the second bar is not gonna be an accent so for the second bar we're gonna accent the hi-hat on beats two four and six of course thinking about eighth notes so that already creates a, a, a more fluid feel because we're not going back to the one and you know cutting a slice of the groove we're gonna keep the same kick drum and snare pattern but we're gonna have a, a parallel uh, accent pattern on our hi-hat blending every two bars in a more fluid way check out how that sounds And this is a really good strategy to start making this odd time signature more fluid. And I understand that uh, accenting every two notes in this context at first might be a little bit difficult. So if you are having trouble in trying to do that, you could try using two different sounds with your uh, uh, ride pattern to create the same feel but without having to really accent every two notes. So you can use the right bell and the, the center of the right cymbal alternating those sounds to create the same effect. So I'm gonna play exactly the same groove, but I'm gonna start by playing the right bell and I'm gonna alternate the right bell and the, the center of the right cymbal for you to understand how we can use the same feel, the same idea, but without having to have this accent control at first. Now I'm going to show you a different strategy to create a different groove in this 7-8 bar. So we're not messing up with accents right now. I'm going to take the kick drum and the snare pattern and I'm gonna change that a little bit to rebuild this groove in a different way so what I like to do is to take the same sequence of notes I'm playing with my kick drum and my snare drum but replace those notes inside the bar so we're gonna start by playing the kick drum on the one but the snare hit that we were playing on the third eighth note of the bar we're gonna bring it one sixteenth note back so now our first backbeat is going to be played between the second and the third eighth notes of the bar and those two kick drum notes we were playing on beats five and six of the seven eight bar we're going to bring them back one eighth note so we're going to play those two kick drums on beats four and five of our new groove and we're going to play the second backbeat one eighth note behind too so we're going to play our second backbeat now on beat six and we're gonna have our last eighth note on the hi-hat by itself so we're kind of shrinking our groove to this new seven eight groove and you're gonna see that it sounds completely different from what we were playing before so check out how this new groove sounds And now for our final example, I'm gonna use both strategies together. So I'm gonna play our new 7-8 groove, but accenting on every two eighth notes on the hi-hat. And also I'm gonna show by playing the right cymbal, alternating between the bell 
and the body of the cymbal. And I'm gonna throw some ghost notes in there too, just to make the groove more interesting and just to show you how you can create different layers inside this groove to make it cooler. So these are some of the strategies I like to use when I'm building a groove in an odd time signature. And these are some of the strategies I use to get used to a new odd time signature too. So if you are not used to playing odd time signatures, you can use those strategies to start getting more familiar with it. And by playing these different time signatures, you're gonna be way more capable to understand those in other songs too. So your perception gets a lot better by trying to play those time signatures. And as I said, I already posted a lesson on the 5 over 4 bar, so that's really cool too. I'm gonna put the link of that lesson here on the description for you to dig a little deeper into this odd time signatures world. And as I promised, I'm gonna bring once in a while a new odd time signature and show you how I, I mess up with it to create cool grooves inside this world and I hope you like this lesson. If you are new to Odd Time Signatures, post on the comments, post if you liked, if you understand it, if you have any doubts, just ask me and I, I'm gonna be really happy to reply to your comment and to your questions, okay? Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, don't forget to follow Dromo Sapiens on Instagram to like the Facebook page and don't forget that if you want to receive every week the transcriptions of these exercises with a new lesson link, go to subscribe.dromosapiens.com and subscribe to the mailing list. And I see you on the next lesson. <laughs>